<clears throat> welcome, welcome, everybody. You know, I thought about doing a live stream, but I just didn't have the time today. So I, you know, <clears throat> today is the 50th birthday, what would have been the 50th birthday of the late, great Michael Turner, who is an artist I think influenced most everybody my age, uh, I would say. And uh, before I get started, though, if you like this channel, please subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell for notifications. And you might be asking, Joe, is that the same shirt you were wearing on Mark Poulton's stream last night? And the answer is yes. Yes, it is. Because I don't like doing laundry. So there's that. Anyway, I wanted to do a video on you know, showcasing some of my favorite Michael Turner art. Now, I've done an appreciating comic book video in the past looking at Soul Fire, uh, which was one of his creator-owned projects at uh, Aspen Comics. And uh, it was that was awesome. But, you know, my favorite work of his is probably Fathom. And there's, there's a few reasons. So we'll, we'll get into that. Um, but, you know, I saw earlier Richard Friend did, did a video looking at a bunch of Michael Turner art. And it was it was gorgeous. It was an awesome video. So if you get a chance, check out Richard Friend's channel and look at that that video because he goes over a lot of line works, you know, a lot of black and white uh, versions of his art. Where I'm going to look at more uh, of the comic book art in general. And like I said before, you know, a breakdown Michael Turner. He came up through Top Cow. He was one of those talented guys that just he got it at at an early point. He just got. He's a very talented artist. Um, you know, everybody knows the story of Mark Silvestri asking him to draw a building and he came back and drew the worst building he'd ever seen. And he told Michael Turner to take some reference books and go back and draw him another building. And it took him like, I don't know, like an hour or something. And he came back and he drew the best building that Mark Silvestri had ever seen in his life. You know, and Mike, Mike worked on backgrounds and, and stuff like a lot of artists at Top Cow did at the time. And they kind of graduated doing uh, trading cards. And he had gotten so good so fast that they gave him his own mini series, Ballistic. Which, if you haven't seen that series, um, you need to check it out. I, I was going to do a video on it a while back, and I just haven't got around to doing it. But I want to because for some of his first work as a professional storyteller, it's, it's amazing. And I don't know if he had help with by Silvestri doing layouts or whatever. I don't know. But regardless, just the book itself is is brilliant. It's awesome. And then they created Witchblade for Michael Turner because he was just, you know, he was that good. And when you see a talent like that, you want to groom that talent. You want to give him a chance to shine. And on Witchblade, he definitely did shine. And he, he rose to superstardom through Witchblade. I mean, I think Michael Turner drew some of the best looking women but just people in general but you know he special specialized in drawing women um of anybody in the industry you know this if he hadn't died at the, the very young age of 37 uh he could have probably gone down as one of the all-time greats i mean that's just how talented this dude was he he was an amazing artist and i never got to meet him in person but from all accounts he was just uh, an amazing human being too so we're going to jump in. We're going to look at some uh, Michael Turner Fathom art. <clears throat> and the reason why I wanted to go with Fathom, because this was his one of his first ventures into his own character, his own IP. And he launched it. I know it says uh, Aspen there, but he originally launched it through Image and uh, through Top Cow. And uh, later it went over to, to Aspen where he, he ended up publishing it. But the point with Fathom, if you caught the uh, Graveyard Shit 3 closeout stream last night on Mark Poulton's channel, we talked a little bit about Turner. And I had brought up later in, Turner, in, in Turner's career, he started doing more line work. And he relied a lot on Peter Steigerwald to, to really bring it together with the colors. And it was, it, he was one of the pioneers. You know, him and Joe Mod were probably the pioneers of going straight from pencil to colors you know very tight pencils and you have the colors really bring it alive and there's it was a very awesome look you know he had a very 
uh, a special look to his line work. You know, if you look at the, uh, I've got the Treasury edition of Michael Turner's Batman Superman run. Beautiful art. I need to do a video on that sometime and just show it off for anybody that hasn't seen it. Uh, there's a ton of videos on YouTube, which is one of the reasons why I haven't. But I, one day I will. One day I will because I just I would like everybody to see that if you haven't got a chance to see it. But going back to Mike's earlier career with Witchblade and then with Fathom, I really liked how he looked when he worked with an inker. As much as I liked Mike's pure lines as, with pencils, there's just something very, very dynamic, very energetic when he worked with good inkers. And you see, you know, like a guy right now on this cover, Joe Weems, who I've said before, you know, has, has worked with them all. And he's made them all look good. And he just, he, he can take what an artist does well and bring it out. And that some, some of my favorite work is by <clears throat> Michael Turner with Joe Weems inking or, you know, uh, Matt Banning inking. Just, you know, name them. any of the Top Cow inkers because they have great inkers over there. <clears throat> but yeah, let's just, look, we're going to cruise through here. We've got a lot of pages to get through. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I just want to. You know, take take the opportunity. Should I break this down in two pages? Maybe. I don't know. Does that work? Is that better? Yeah, let's just do that. We'll cover more pages like that. One thing that was cool about Fathom, and I think this starts with with Fathom Zero. And by the way, you can find all this stuff on Comicsology if you don't have the original floppies around. But I encourage you if you can find these. Uh, if you can get them ordered through, through your comic store or if you can find them on eBay, check them out because they're definitely worth having in your collection. I've got them all, but this is just, this is way easier and better quality for me to show everybody. This is just absolutely gorgeous double page spread here. I mean, I've said this before, but to draw a figure in proportion that big, because that's two 11 by 17 pages put together, you know, pieces of paper, artboard put together. That's a huge figure to draw. And then to keep that all in in perspective and proportions correct, uh, it's just awesome. And I've said this before, but any, could anybody draw faces better, female faces specifically, better than Michael Turner? I mean, he just kind of perfected the way to draw a, a woman's face in the late 90s early 2000s. I mean, there were so many people copying the Michael Turner eye. Even Mark Silvestri did for a little while. And the lips, too. The eye, the lips, the nose. I mean, th those things were, they were covered you know, over and over again. There were uh, tons of clones of Michael Turner that came out during this time. And they all looked good because they're all doing uh, Turner's tricks. So a lot of people benefited. I myself even drew ladies like that for the longest time. You know, before I, I kind of evolved my style, but it was just that popular, had that much of an influence on on young artists. The uh, I don't know if a lot of people know this about Michael Turner, but he was uh, a, he was big into sports, and I'm not I'm not talking like football, baseball. I'm sure he liked all that, but he was big into um, like outdoor sports. You know, like uh, skiing, and and and, and uh, he loved the ocean. You know, there's he was all about it. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So when he did a book like this, where he was show showcasing his love for the ocean, and he really formulated that into his book, where you'll see you know characters surfing, and it's all about the ocean. There, the reason why I like Fathom so much is you could really see the excitement and uh, love that he put into this project. You know, not that he didn't do it with Witchblade, because he did, but this was like, you know, he took his first character and he combined that with one of his true loves, which was the ocean and, and, and sports and, and stuff of, of that aspect, and it melded it into an awesome story. And you can see in his art just how how much he loved doing this. This layout is so cool. I absolutely love stuff like this. It's just, you know, the, the placement of the panels. You know, to not get boring, to find uh, strategic ways to continue to move your eye through the page while still telling a story in a very dynamic fashion. Uh, this is just beautiful. 
the the layout of this page and there's so many panels but you get the story you know you're building some tension there's a lot of tension in this page right here in this scene uh i love this panel here which is basically it's got no borders but it's within the borders are basically the other panels are holding it together but it just it works you know it it absolutely works and some great designs turner was really good at these kind of sci-fi futuristic <clears throat> you know i had some kind of like a little bit of like the witchblade kind of stuff which i don't know is like you want to say it's like kind of organic in nature <clears throat> but he just you know did it was great at those just had a lot of imagination a lot of imagination in his art so it's, all right so oh maybe that was that was oh no no okay, okay. This is number okay. This is number two. All right, I thought that was zero. But this is number two. So we got Michael Turner. Still got uh, Joe Weems on inks. And again, like I said, like I think Joe Weems just did did a beautiful job bringing Michael Turner out. And the one thing that I thought Turner lost as he went farther into his career and did mostly line works and colors is that he, you know, the thing I love about comics is I love the harsh blacks against color or white when it's not colored and i think it adds a lot better than you know a colorist can darken your pencils to a certain extent and then they you know they can they can add that shading themselves but there's a specifically different look that your work has when you just go from straight pencils to colors and i know i've done that before i've worked with a couple of colors i've just gone right over my original pencils they look great but it's, it's got a different it's got a different feel to it it's not the same as having an inked page colored. There's just something about it. It's, you know me, I love it. I, I work with Joe Weems. So I, I couldn't, I can't say enough about Joe Weems in general, but the fact that growing up, I got to see Weems ink some of my favorite artists in Mark Silvestri and Michael Turner, Joe Benitez, David Finch. I mean, go on and Dale Keown, go on and on and on. The dude just, he knows what he's doing and he can work with the artists, bring out what they really want to see in their work. Turner was great at this side profile. The eyes and just the dark aspect of the eyes, just, he kind of really stylized his nose. You see this nose will pop up again and again after Turner got as famous as he did, but this nose still today will pop up because he was that big of an influence with, with young artists at the time. Man, good, great designs, great character designs. And that's got to be a pain in the ass to draw again and again, but it looks so good to the reader that sometimes if you're designing the character, you might have to say like, this is going to be a pain in the ass to do this again and again, but it's going to be worth it because the person reading this book is going to get something out of it. So you take that, you know, you take that little bit of a sacrifice. Plus, if you start doing a a run enough in advance, you can stay ahead of the game when it comes to schedule, especially if you're doing this full time. Yeah. You know, again, I mean, it's a crazy, sexy shot without revealing too much. You know, like first of all, I absolutely love the stylized uh, ripples on the fabric of this of the sheet here. It's just, I know we're staring at at <laughs> a very attractive woman with uh, her top cleavage and, and shoulders exposed. But the thing that really impresses me about this is the fact that you can see the outline of her body still amongst these ripples. It really adds depth to that picture. So it's sexy, but it's also very well drawn, very well put together. And it's uh, sexy without being too overboard, you know, which I know a lot of artists that come from the 90s got accused of that because, you know, it was a very popular thing to have very over sexualized women in comics in the day, but that's what made it awesome. That's what made the nineties awesome. And anytime somebody wants to complain about women being over sexualized, just take a second to look at, at the men. All right. In the nineties, that's all I have to say. And, and, and the conversation, uh, great shot of that oil rig right there. Um, that would be a pain in the ass to draw, but, uh, you know, you know, if you look at some of uh, Richard Friend's videos, he'll talk about some of the guys at Top Cow 
that did backgrounds for a lot of these artists. Not full-on backgrounds, but assists, which I'm, I'm completely fine with. You know, you're putting a book out, you're trying to get it out on time. You know, sometimes you need that help. You know, to you know, and some backgrounds are not the most fun to draw. You know, they really aren't. You know, some people really like it. Some people are generally good at it, and uh, others need a little bit of help, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, if it goes into a good storytelling, then that's that's all that really matters. Just some great. Let's see. Yeah. Man, just take a second to take in this work. And if you get a chance, check out the Soul Fire video I did featuring Michael Turner's work uh, for when he started Aspen. Because it's just, we only have a, a limited amount of Turner work out there, right? You know, so don't take any of it for granted. Because although he did a lot of stuff while he was alive and while he was at the height of his stardom, ultimately we still only have, in retrospect, with some of his peers uh, or legends in this industry who have a giant portfolio of work to go over, there really isn't that much retrospect-wise to look at Turner's stuff. You know, you got Ballistic, you got Witchblade, Fathom, you got Soulfire, um, Batman Superman run that he did, which was fantastic. That is one of my favorites. Fathom is probably my favorite work of his because of the passion and the, it, I could just see the energy that was in it. But my favorite actual run that he did was the Batman Superman run. Um, the one, because you know he's tackling legendary characters for the first time and just knocking it out of the park. You know, and who drew a better Supergirl than Michael Turner? You know, and he's working with one of the best, one of my favorite writers in Jeff Loeb. Yeah, uh, so altogether it was great. But Fathom to me is one of those books where just everything clicked. You know, you worked with a great inker. You know, the colors were, were superb. The story was fun. A brand new character that was Michael Turner's, Michael Turner's, you know, was his character. I know he had a hand in the Witchblade story, but it wasn't like it was his character. He didn't create it. <clears throat> he had, uh, you know, saying some of the stuff that they did. But that was about it. Man, the shading. Yeah, I have to say, you know, like a lot of this has, you know, really screams to me at Joe Weems. And I'm sure if you looked at the original pencils of this, that Turner probably indicated a lot of this stuff. But this is just, it's a very, you know, the dual shading, you know, the secondary light source <clears throat> on this base. This is very hard to do. You can do this and mess a picture up extremely easy if you don't know what you're doing. But working with a, besides being a very talented artist, working with a good inker can also help out quite a bit. You know, and some of this stuff too, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if in, in, uh, in uh, Jonathan D. Smith did the colors. All right, all right. I wouldn't be surprised at some of this stuff if, he had some assistance uh, or maybe even had Weems, Weems himself doing some finishes over, over certain things. I mean, deadlines and deadlines, you know, you got to try to hit them if you want books to come out on time. Cause there are some times where there, there's like, you can definitely tell it's straight up Michael Turner. And then there's other times you can be like, well, you know, maybe there was a little, maybe it was a little bit looser and somebody else finished it um, and kept Turner's style. Top cow, they did that quite a bit. And like I said, I think most of Fathom was published by Image Top Cow before he left and took his properties and, and created Aspen. So that's, that's just a really cool shot. I love the placement here. Kind of basically replacing the eyes. It's very, very cool. Good composition. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, you just go on and on, on and on and on. That's an awesome shot. That is an awesome shot right there. Love the textures in the background with this watery cave. Just, you know, I think he picked a lot of that up from Mark Silvestri. His top cow artists were great at doing this kind of texture. And I have to think that that came from the legend himself, Mark Silvestri. Because this is just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful textures. 
Let's see how much more we got here. I know we got quite a bit. Let's see. Let's skip ahead. Oh, that's a cool shot. As an artist, I really like stuff like this. Because this can be very simple to draw, and a lot of it probably does get brought together by the colorist. But to see something like this uh, come out in person has got to be pretty fun as an artist. So, yeah, I think a lot of this, are, you know, we're looking over reprints that Aspen probably put out of his IP. And again, like I said, you know, a lot of this looks like Turner. Some of it looks maybe a little looser, but I feel like we've seen a, a pretty big shift. I wonder if, uh, yeah, I mean, it still looks like it's inked. Yeah, I'd say it probably still is. But yeah, yeah, all right. So, Anyway, that's a little bit of Michael Turner. I'm not going to keep on going. This is oh, 21 minutes already. Jeez, it's a long video. I did not mean for it to be that long, but I just uh, have a great love for Michael Turner. And there is a hole in the industry that he's not out there creating beautiful art and fun characters for us still. So on his 50th birthday, happy birthday, Michael Turner. Uh, you were gone way too soon. You were beloved by millions. This industry uh, owes you a debt of gratitude for when you came along and really you know, put some excitement for a time being back into an industry that has ups and downs. But you came at the right time and your star shot to the top. And you burned bright and we miss you we definitely do so rest in peace michael turner happy birthday and thanks so much for joining me guys and i will see you all later remember if you like this video please subscribe hit the like button hit the bell for notifications and as always have a great day i'll talk to you later peace